Hello everybody and welcome to the HCW podcast. This week we are reviewing WWE Friday Night Smackdown, WWE Money in the Bank from the UK and WWE Monday Night Raw and then we will move on to AEW and we'll review Collision and Wednesday Night Dynamite. Stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. Roll intro. HCW Reviews Hello everybody and welcome to the show. I am your host Frozzy, as always alongside Ray Russell. How are you doing buddy this week? Uh, no, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm, I've just suddenly become tired like five minutes prior to this. Like yeah. it just suddenly kicked off. I think it's because I've just finished work like two minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not been like dead well today. Like work sent me home. So yeah, all good, all good on that score. But um, yeah, uh, back in tomorrow. got two days in and then I'm off for like what feels like ever. So um, yeah. yeah. Good including fun. the podcast! Yeah, including everything. Literally, clean break for, like, I think I missed the next three after this. Yeah. Um, so if you don't like Frozzy, the next yeah. three weeks is going to be oh, wonderful yeah. for I you. I can say, if you do not like me, you're going to love life for the next three podcasts. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, if you hate DP more than you hate me, you're you're not in for a treat at all. Yeah. But um, I'm not going to have a good time. No. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of wrestling to get through like there was last week because obviously WWE have had their PLE, shall we say. Um, They emanated from the UK, got a great reaction. The the crowd chants were unreal for both SmackDown and Money in the Bank. Um, But yeah, we may as well crack on with Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, um, I actually watched everything this week as well, so I've I've, I've worked it out now. Um, Yeah, so SmackDown, I'll instantly say this, I wasn't really into SmackDown. Like, I feel like it wasn't as good as I expected it to be um, with the money in the bank. I don't know if it was just I expected a lot more and just nothing really felt like it happened. I, th- I think um, the matches were, were like decent because we knew we were getting good matches because it was pretty deadly in the, the tag team titles with Gaines, KO and Sammy. So that yeah. was decent. Um, but yeah, I, t- I still think and I will stand by the fact that that should have been on the pay-per-view. Yeah, like especially because it, it went on first. Um, Zayn and KO picked up the win. I only rated two and three quarters. It just felt a waste of a match. They I didn't really kick into good. gear. Yeah. yeah, like I didn't expect pretty... I wanted pretty to the win because I thought UK kind of thing, yeah. you know. KO and Sammy have kind of lost momentum now because they're not involved with the bloodline. Yeah. And they just got beat. There wasn't even... Like, they just got beat. Yeah. Um, Sammy's still so over, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um... What's going to happen is KO will turn on him. That's going to be the only kind of niche you can see in it. Is, it, um, is KO KO's the one who turns all the time, though, isn't he? But I don't think they'll make Sammy turn, because I think that'll be like... They're selling merch and everything like that, yeah. whereas KO's just there to be the funny guy at the moment. Um, Adam Pearce was backstage. I don't remember what he did, but I wrote Pearce. I'm thinking it's something to do with Holland and um, Fury's match. I think he announced that like, he's got a match with Fury. Yeah, um, he, they were on about opportunities and stuff like that um, and then he was like well fight Austin Theory <laughs> there you go Yeah, and he did fight Austin Theory I rated two stars because it was just a bit of a mad match yeah. especially for Ridge Holland UK based you know thought they kind of give him a bit of like a bit of shine on this but no he just got beat yeah. <laughs> just, got, just got beat then he got mauled by Austin well he was about to get mauled by Austin Theory and Seamus came out to save him yeah um so they were just pretty much just getting any UK goal on this screen. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, Ireland, technically, but you know. Uh, then we had a match which was basically for Bailey's spot in the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. Um, yeah. She went against Shotzi. Right, this two stars as well. It was meh ish. Yeah. Right. Um, then kind of attacked Sh- Shotzi afterwards um, backstage. Um, damage control. Well, we said damage control, her and Neo. Um, and cut Shotzi's hair. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, the 15th round of the Waller effect every week now. It's the Miz TV. Also, I found out, did you see why Waller hasn't been wrestling? No. He's got, he had a broken leg, um, ah. supposedly, um, in NXT, but they haven't said anything right. for some reason. So that's probably kind of now it makes sense that he's not wrestling, but also I'd like to have known that. Yeah, so the, I mean, and now it makes sense why they have a greater Waller effect every single week because they're trying to yeah. keep it relevant because they're clearly going to do something with him. So, yeah. 
Um, this was with LA Knight. Um, the joke on this week's show was um, obviously they he should stick to being a manager. You know, he's too old for the championship and stuff like that. Um, and then Santos comes down. And it's just a lot of random crap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like him saying he was too old for the championship played more into the fact that I thought LA Knight was going to win. Yeah, and also Damien Priest is older than LA Knight. Um, so yeah. <laughs> then we had Sant- um, Butch come down and just obviously mauled for Grayson Waller because he's Butch. Then we had a triple threat with Santos, LA Knight and Butch, and I believe LA Knight won, if I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read it two and a half stars. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. Uh, there was a brawl, and then Butch did a thing, and it was fun. Then we had Charlotte versus um, Oscar. Oh, I forgot this was going to happen. Um, I read it two and a quarter stars because it was punch, and yeah. I was really sad about it. Yes. Yeah, and Belair got involved, and Belair's got to be healed now. That's the only thing that would light my fire of Belair. And this, the the skin, the the hair whipping as a heel would probably work better as well. Yeah. Just like because um, it would annoy people. Yeah. And then uh, Bloodline were just pretty much like hyping the whole Money in the Bank Civil War kind of thing. Um, Solo laughs, and then it. What annoying was? Did you see BT Sport cut out the whole of the ending? Yeah. Yeah, half an hour. I didn't know what was going on. I had to go for. I just basically had to watch the highlights, which I basically missed most of the stuff. Which is. Yeah. They just had a brawl at the end, but you know what was fun? Darice, the Kamikaze Pro Live Champion. Um, no, the Kamikaze Pro Heavyweight Champion. Roman Reigns threw him into the guardrail. That was the Reese. No way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and there was a joke because the Reese tries to shill his merch everywhere. He's going, Roman Reigns, you tried to sell him a shirt, didn't you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just whammed. Yeah, he was the one that got whammed into the guardrail. Pretty no cool. Way. Kamikaze jump. And that was the end of SmackDown. In my opinion, it was a bit meh. Yeah, for a go-home show, but he always finds the same with the SmackDown go-home shows. <laughs> They're always a bit meh, apart from the Bloodline yeah. stuff. <laughs> but you'd expect in the UK it to not be slightly less meh, but it was just pretty much, let's get any UK go on this screen. The, and the, crowd let's not make, do much. the crowd make it Yeah, in the UK. The, the matches can be shite, but the crowd will be fire. Exactly, right. yeah, it's because they don't get it much, do they? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was the end of the the SmackDown Go Home show. Yeah, so we then moved on to the next night for Money in the Bank, where there was a lot more inventive chanting. Yeah. Um, so as usual, I don't really write notes on the Money in the Bank like pay per views because I just write the rating if I enjoyed them because yeah. I don't want to waste my time writing notes for pay per views. Uh, Money in the Bank men's match. Um, I did really enjoy this around three and three quarters. It was a good kick off. It started slow, but by the end of it, you kind of got really into it. Um, obviously, as I said, the Ending was marred because I really wanted the LA Knight to win. Um, but yeah. Damien Priest is a good money in the bank as well. If LA Knight weren't was, in that yeah. match, I wouldn't mind it, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, there was there was only two feasible outcomes I can see, and the obvious one was LA Knight, and if it wasn't him, Damien Priest was the other. Um, yeah. Where I wouldn't be as pissed off, but I was still like more raging that LA Knight didn't win because I felt like he, um, he did it more than Priest. What was annoying about it as well is that LA um, Knight grabbed the briefcase and then Priest did the Falcon Arrow off the top of the ladder and just stood back up. Yeah. <laughs> if you fucking went tailbone first off a ladder, you're not just randomly standing back up. No. How, also, uh, how is Logan Paul not dead? Because he knows how to tuck and roll. It's to blood on his arm, though. Madness. Absolute and madness. That- like, there was a couple of bumps where I'm like, you're not fully trained. How are you yeah. not dead? <laughs> they're definitely going to have the Ricochet Will Ospreay kind of match at SummerSlam. That's what they're going to attempt to do um, that they had at New Japan. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, but, I mean, I don't want to see Logan Paul against Ricochet. Yeah, but it's happening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Mr. Senor. Well, Mr. Senor. Senor Money in the Bank, uh, Damien Priest. Um, yeah. And it's falling in with the Finn Factor, which I do like. Yeah. Uh, next up from this, we had um, Ronda and Shayna versus Liv and Raquel. So obviously, I've been going on about how prestigious they're going to make these titles and have a long run <laughs> titles have been shot thing. So obviously, what happened was Shayna Baszler decided to randomly halfway through the match decide to choke out Ronda, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then Liv and Rack picked up the win. And um, I rated two and three quarters because it was a fun match until then. Um, as soon as this happened, I was like, Rate's going to be fuming. <laughs> yeah, it was just I don't get it. 
like why I get just it. Make it? I just I get it, but it also it's just the hot shot way of doing yeah, it. Wasn't yeah, it? It's, 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 yeah, it's it's very quick, but apparently Rousey's gotten out in a contract that she's taken. So, and I don't want to see Liv and Raquel over the totals again. <laughs> yeah, but if they want to get Ronda and Shayna done, they they don't need to be champs. So I get and it what's from worse? that side of things. They got rid of fucking Alba Fire and flipping Isla Dawn's title reign for this shit. Yeah. Just let them have the titles and then get China get choke out Ronda at flipping in you know, like a triple threat tag match maybe or something like that. So at least it could have just Alba been... Fire team could have won it, yeah. I mean, at least now it makes sense as to why this was on the on the paper. Yeah. Because I was more annoyed that this was on and the tag team match pretty deadly KO and Sammy wasn't. But yeah, now it makes this sense. Happened, it makes sense. Bollocks. Um, but the match was good until that point. It was just yeah. an absolute waste of time. Uh, Gumpfer versus Riddle, I rated three and a quarter stars because it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It just seemed to... I think it's because they were playing the Riddle injury of his foot yeah. that they couldn't really have a long... Like, the strikes were insane and stuff like that. It just yeah. was really short. Yeah, uh, it ended so... Like, I said that when we were watching it. I was like, that ended, like, abruptly. I didn't see it coming. <clears throat> and then what I didn't see coming at all was fucking Drew McIntyre coming back. No, no. <laughs> yeah, because like they're going on about he isn't fucking wanting to be there and like his contract. I mean, is Drew McIntyre going to be yeah. fighting for the Intercontinental Championship? He might win the match as well. Genuinely, cause I be think the they one. might take it off Gunther to for him to go towards the the main title picture. Yeah, I d- I do, the only thing I don't want him to do is take the title off Gunther if they've got no intention of putting him there straight away. Like, mm. because I feel like he's doing good stuff with the title. All his matches are great. So don't take it off him if you're not going to give him a chance to get the other one. Yeah, like, like he would be been Gunther would be perfect to win like, the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Because they're on about Rhodes versus Reigns again. If Rhodes wins the Rumble again, I'll be fucking furious. I don't want to see him win it twice in a row yeah. because he was so predictable last time. I don't yeah. want to see him win it again. Well, that was the uh, thing about the men's money in the bank, wasn't it? Like, no yeah. former world champions. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so hopefully they might do gun for again. Um, block bigger or rubble win. That'll be great. Uh, Drew Claymore kicked um, one of the um, Imperium guards. I think it was Vinci. Yeah. Um, and it's Drew held the toll. Yeah. And then next up, we had Cody Rhodes versus Dominic Mysterio. All right, this two and three quarters. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was just abrupt once again. Um, yeah, it, was a, it, it seemed ended. to be a theme, didn't it? <laughs> like, but yeah. it was clean ended. Like, he, he hit the moves he should have hit, and he pinned it. And it's like, exactly. fair enough. <laughs> I get it. Like, Dominic doesn't look bad losing. Yeah, and then um, next up, we had John Cena, of all people, um, which pissed off my nephew to no end, because we couldn't go to the show, but my nephew's like a massive John Cena mark. Right. And like, there was no... In your head, you wouldn't just think John Cena's randomly going to be at the fucking yeah, UK no, show. No. So he was well wound up about it. Yeah. Um, so Cena's hinting at Mania happening in the future, and now they're speaking about it in fucking House and Commons and shit like that. So they know what to do, WWE. Pay yeah. us money, we'll bring in Mania to London. Yeah. And then we'll do 55 comp tickets where I've got to go to SmackDown. I'm, I'm going to have to go to SmackDown because I'm not missing Mania in London. I know, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. bad thing. I'm gonna, I, I will want to do it all. Yeah. It yeah, be... and it also just saves going to America. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, I I hope to do it. A lot of people are talking like logistically and cost effective. It isn't good, but it is. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's well, it's a global event. It's not just in the UK. It brings in people from other countries. Wembley's the biggest arena, isn't it? Look, like, that's the Wembley's, is it the... Wembley's the biggest, but Tottenham Hotspur Stadium has the roof. Yeah, so it depends on like then again. Though. It depends when they have it because if they have it around about like it has to be. In April, no, it has to be it? April. So rain, top, yeah. Top, top um, yeah, because it's kind of like if they kind of risked it or built like some kind of plasticky route for it. Because mm. um, you have ninety thousand seat wise, but that's not including being around the ring, isn't it? So you yeah. can fucking yeah. be massive. That would. Um, that's sell it out, and then obviously because Wembley around there, you could have like the merchandise areas and the crap they do around there yeah they would sell oh, a lot oh yeah no they'd sell they'd yeah. sell both nights if they did two night wrestlemania they'd sell oh, I forgot there's two nights jesus mm. christ um and then we went on to 
Oh, yeah, Gr- Grayson Waller came down, said us crap about Cena, and Cena AA'd him. Clearly, that was just the old Grayson Waller is entertaining as hell, though. He's entertaining. It's just, I want to see him wrestle, but now I know why I'm not seeing him wrestling. It makes a bit more sense. I just wish WWE would have said it. The only thing that annoyed me about all this is that we are saying that matches ended abruptly and John Cena takes up 20 minutes on a mic. Um, Money in the Bank women's match. I rate this three and three quarters as well because I did enjoy this one as well and I really enjoyed the ending. I was going to say the ending was fantastic. The ending was so good because of the portrayal. So EO, while the team's working together, Trish and Zoe and um, EO and Bailey, Bailey, EO was about to grab the briefcase. Bailey pushed her off. Corey Graves is playing. That was just instinct. Clearly it wasn't. She wanted to push her off. Yeah. Um, and then a brawl happened between Bailey and Becky and they're fighting the thingy. Um, prior to this, I don't know if it was Becky. Was it Becky that put the... Not Becky, Bailey. Did she put the the handcuff on? Or was it the Zoe? It was Zoe and Trish, wasn't yeah. it? It was Zoe and Trish that did that. But they didn't get the other handcuff onto the rope. So what happened was uh, Bailey and Becky are fighting in between the ladder trying to climb up. EO pops out of nowhere and grabs the hand of um, Becky, slides it through, attaches it to Bailey. So they're both... Like attached with the handcuffs between the rungs so they can't move. And then EO just climbs over Bailey oh, and nice. then gets the uh, money in the bank. Really, really good ending. Inventive. Like, it's different. Yeah. And when it's different, it's great. Yeah, and it worked really well for the whole of what happened. Yeah. Made Becky, like, Becky couldn't win it again. Uh, Trish broke her nose, which is so fucking awful looking. Yeah. Um, everyone looked good. Yeah. That was the whole point of it. Um, then I forgot that Balor versus Rollins was a match. Yeah. I was like, oh, it should be Civil War now. Um, but yeah, Balor versus Rollins, I rated three and a quarter stars. Um, the main point of this match was uh, send your money in the bank, cost Finn Balor. Yeah. Because Finn Balor, instead of hitting the coup de gras, decided to look at him for a few moments. He would have won that match. Yeah. Oh, yeah, unless he's conscious to get there. And now, um, obviously, the Judgment Day is imploding slightly. Yeah, so this is annoying because... Judgment Day has started to catch fire in the last sort of four or five months. Yeah. And it's like they've seen it and been like, well, no, this can't happen. Let's break them up. Uh, business all over again. Um, but yeah, what's weird is there's supposed to be a new member coming at some point, so I don't know what they're going to do. do. Well, they think it's JD McDonough, don't they? I'm assuming what's going to yeah. happen is Priest's going to go. And they're going to add JD. Yeah, yeah. they'll add JD instead. Yes. Irish. All of the Irish. Get Seamus involved. Um, and Becky, there we go, just, just call them Ireland. Um, but yeah, so Rollins picked up the win, um, and then they were going to attack, they were going to claim the um thing, but Rollins kind of went no, yeah. <laughs> left. Um, and then we had the main event, which was my match of the night because, of course, it was. Um, right at four and a quarter stars, really, really good, yeah. so good, oh, like the like, best. The ending and like the layers between the ending. So obviously, in the end, Jay picked up the win on Roman Reigns. Yeah. But the layers of it, um, but I didn't know a lot of this. Jay Uso was the first person who ever pinned Roman Reigns as well. Yeah. In WWE, yeah. like twenty, like ten years ago, or whatever. And then yeah. he's the next. But oh, it's so good. Yeah. Um, first person in three and a half years. Roman's breakdown afterwards, like of what's happened, because you were thought everyone thought Solo was losing that match. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> But now, yeah, and now on SmackDown this week, um, we're gonna, they're going to have the Tribal Chiefs court again, but it's the Usos have done, done the court. Oh, it's going to be so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm already looking forward to it. It's going to be mint. Roman's going to smash them, and he's got something's going to happen, or someone's going to join the like to help him, or something yeah. like that. Something's going to pop up. I don't know who could join them. Um, no. The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, uh, I so mean, like there was the bit as well where he stacked them and they kicked out. And I was just oh like, yeah oh. everything yeah oh. oh it's just everything was so good. He t- I don't know if you've seen the video actually, but after the splash, as the referees counting, Roman tells Jay he loves him. It's so good. No. Oh. Yeah, it was just like ruining K five there. I didn't like the match. I'm writing it three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about K five. That's great. That's Roman Reigns. Is just the man. Jay won't win the title. Oh no, no. <laughs> but now he is. Feasibly, the only one who can. Yeah, but Jey Uso is the world champion. Does not work. Yeah, because um, there's just nowhere to go afterwards, is no. it? Um, but I don't want Cody Rhodes to win the title either. I don't want anyone to ever beat Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, just keep him with the title. In eight years' time, we'll be like, 
greatest title reign ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roman San Martino. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, end the money in the bank. Yeah, not... Um... I mean, they do put on banger shows when it comes to PLEs and stuff like that. This yeah. one was a bit underwhelming, just because of the abruptness of some of the endings, but it wasn't a bad pay-per-view at the same time. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It, it said, look, it's, I've seen a lot worse WWE pay-per-views. Like, oh. uh, you know, the old school, yeah. It was fine. I said there was one four-star match and two three and three-quarter matches, so you can't yeah. really complain. No, exactly. But yeah, with, with that, we'll move on to Raw. Um, Raw after Mania. That's what I said. Raw after Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, Rollins was in the ring. Um, he's about to discuss things. Cody just interrupts him straight away. Cody's basically going to challenge Ra- um, Rollins, I'm guessing. But then here comes Lesnar. Um, they brawl. Cody Rhodes overwhelms Lesnar somehow, which was really surprising. Yeah. Um, and then it goes to break. Comes back. Um, Rollins is in the middle of the ring. He's about to start his own spiel again. And then here comes the Judgment Day. And it ends up with it's going to be um, Rollins versus Dom later on in the night. Dirty Dom, as he's now called. Love it. Dirty Dom. So good. Also, forgot to mention Money in the Bank. Fucking Corey Graves was selling it. Dominic Mysterio spent a night in Tower of London. (laughs) I loved it. (laughs) Um... This followed with Priest versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I rated three stars. It was a good match. It was always Priest just to kind of show his dominance, but Shinsuke got a bit of uh, involved. Priest picked up the win. Um, Ronda comes out and calls out Shayna and goes, why would you do this? And I really like this promo with Shayna. Have you seen this it? This was so, so good. Because she basically says, I'm the reason you got here. I had to toil on the indies. I had to do this. And you just fucking batted your eyelids and got here because you're Ronda yeah. Rousey yeah. was pretty much the term of it. Um... And then they have a little like, mini brawl. Um, yeah. And then Shayna lays in the thickest knee of her in my life. Oh, Londa mate. goes down like a ton of bricks. <laughs> it was the way she was like, you wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for me. And I apologise so to all of these fans. <laughs> they need to make Shayna like NXT Shayna. Yeah. That's, that Beat Bronda that and then have a title run. Have a yeah. title run with... Um, she's on Raw, isn't she? So it'll be the... It's Raw Champ. Rhea. Rhea. God damn it, no. <laughs> That'll be a them, banger of a match. I was going to say, we've seen them matches and they're always great, but... Mm. I don't know. I suppose you could Man. do it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Rhea forever. Um, then we had Alpha Academy backstage. Pep Talk. It's going to be Fingy's first match, Maxine Dupree. Um, Raiders. Random crap like that. Um, Cross... Nikki Cross then is trying to get um, Candice to be a tag team partner, but Candice has already said yes to Indy because of the way. Yeah. Um, tag team turmoil. I rated this one and a quarter stars. It was fucking horrendous. <laughs> no one could fucking time any spots. Everything was awful. The Karens won the match. Yeah. They beat four teams in a row. <laughs> um, Nixon, Newell's back. Tegan, just randomly. Um, Indy got pinned within not seconds, so that's her big spotlight. We're already done. Um, so, yeah, that next week, we're going to have um, the Karens versus um, Rakow and Liv. Um, yeah. Clearly, they're not going to win. Uh, <laughs> no, not on Raw, anyway. No. Then we had Co- Cody come down to the, the entrance, and he started speaking about how he can fail fight Lesnar at any time, anywhere. I just wrote this was pointless. What was the point of this promo? Yeah. Just just repeating the same old hash crap. Just do it in the back. Um, yeah. Six man tag followed this Alpha Academy versus um Viking Raiders. Rated one and three quarters. Alpha Academy won with a cool roll up by Maxine Dupree on um Valhalla. Sarah Logan. Yeah, um Varhalla, yeah, I forgot that was her actual name. <laughs> um she looked alright. She looked, remind me of um, Lana, uh, Maxine Dupree, who could wrestle slightly. Yeah. Um, if you give her like the most coordinated spot, she'll do them. Um, yeah, so Lana got better as, as it went. Yeah. Uh, and then they released her as she was getting better, which was wild. Uh, but hopefully they don't do the same with Maxine. You just, you just got to Maxine, give time. She's got the gimmick of being with Otis as well, which makes it funny. Like Maxine attempting to do the worm was so what she actually did it, but then she got cough. Like that kind of thing worked. I really wanted to do Gable's finish. That would have popped me so much if she did the uh, <laughs> chaos theory. Yeah. Oh god. Um, I need to start speaking about Eddie Kingston. Then that's the, that's the next show. Um, <laughs> Ricochet wants to fight 
Logan Paul. Um, Nat's going to fight Rhea Ripley tonight. And I was like, Nat kept going like I deserve this art match. She fucking got squashed at flipping Crown Jewel or whatever it was. Why is yeah. she getting this match? Yeah. Um, and then after all this, I rated this match of the night with Natalia versus Rhea Ripley. It was a really good match. <laughs> um, the only thing that let it down is that I knew Ripley was going to win. Yeah. That's uh, like if, if there was a hint from Natalia maybe being able to win, it probably would have got higher rating, but it was never gonna happen. Um and then there she's about to beat Nat and then here comes Liv and Rack to save the day. What did you actually rate it? You rated it the three highest match of the night and you did yeah, you three didn't a, say that. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, three and a quarter stars. Um Riddle versus Vinci, I rated three and a qu- um sorry f- three quarters of a star. Um it was just a meh riddle won a match. Um, Rollins and Dom was the main event, right? They're two and three quarters. Um, Rollins just pretty much. Uh... What happened with that? I can't even remember the ending. Did he pin Dom or did Priest get involved? Priest got involved, didn't he? I don't yeah. think he pinned Dom. Yeah, and then no, it kind of went mental. On it, I think. Yeah, and then they started beating down um, Rollins, and you thought Priest was going to cash in, but Finn and kind then... of stopped the cashing. Kind they kept of. Saying that Balor wasn't there, there, didn't he? And yeah, then yeah. He was. <laughs> Yeah, and he in- unintentionally stopped the cashing because yeah. he just attacked Rollins and it kind of went weird. And then Rollins laid out Dom, and that was the end of Raw. Yeah, so it I was just, okay. Like, Rhea and Dom were egging Priest on to cash in. Yeah. And I was like, the longer you're taking to egg him on to do this, the more Rollins is recovering. Like, he Gosh. would be stupid to cash in now anyway. Yeah, and I'm glad he didn't because I could imagine them fucking. I don't want Priest. I want Priest to be a champion. I don't want him to lose money in the bank because he, he's a good wrestler. Yeah. And I think it'll work rather than someone like when they had Corbin or Cena have it. I don't mind if they lost because yeah. it's. Yeah, exactly. Well, so end of Raw. Not not the greatest Raw. Um, yeah. I think it was just maybe like rushing back to America. Wrote, wrote quite quickly, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, wasn't great. Um, but we'll move on to Collision. I think I also missed a complete thing with Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. I think something happened between them. It just popped to me head and I don't yeah, remember. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, it was a promo. Um, and her Becky was in the ring saying that she wasn't bothered about Money in the Bank and not winning. Yeah. She just wanted to take out Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus comes down with Zoe Stark. The T's getting into the ring. They don't get into the ring. She says that the fans are still all uglier than her. She is the face of the women's division and stuff like that. And she wants to... Uh, if Becky wants to fight her, she has to go through Zoe first, basically. So I Thank think that will happen next week. Yeah. Thank you, Trish. Yeah. I don't mind this Trish run. It's, no. it's funny. No, yeah. She's it's, quite ill. It's going well. Um, and it's good for Zoe as well, so... Yeah, the less Trish wrestles, the better it'll be, though. That's a lot of manager mouthpiece kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, let's kick back in time to Collision. Yeah, we'll go um, to Collision now, right? <laughs> so, hilariously, um, they hoped MJF first time in a Collision and stuff like that, and then he beat Kip Morse. Um, and I rated zero stars because he won it in 10 seconds. Like, Have they really just done this? This is, yeah. this is MJF's appearance. But then MJF goes, you know what? This is that easy. I'm going to have an open challenge to anyone that's from this place, I think it was Hamilton. Yeah. Um, and then here comes Ego Page. Obviously, there's a bit of a rivalry between them because of the old um, pinnacle. Was it the pinnacle with them? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was. It the wasn't, yeah. Um, then we ended up, he got goaded into the match. MGF versus Page, I read it three stars. It was a good match. Um, yeah. MGF obviously was going to pick up the win. Um, but it was, a, it was a good match. The promo Went going straight... in from Page was great. Yeah, yeah, he did deliver a good promo. Um, He's a facious promo, but that's obviously because he's in uh, Canada. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Then we had Dustin Rhodes versus Will Hobbs. Um, right at the two and three quarters. Um, it was fine. Yeah. It, it was a good, it was a good, fine match. Um, and then QT got hit over it here, and I don't even know what that was. Um, I don't remember much of that match. No, me neither. Uh, Miro fought out Anthony Henry around it one star because Miro just obviously plastered him. Yeah. Um, BC Gold are barred from ringside, um, according to this, for the Starks and Juice match. Um, they're on about Starks losing and um, MGF, which is like a general gist of that. Yeah. Uh, Starks versus Juice, I rated it three and a half stars. Really enjoyed it. I think it was my ma- it was my match of the night. Um, 
Starks picked up the win, so to get a bit of momentum on that, and FTR kind of saved him after the Bullet Club goal came down to kind of maul him. Yeah. Uh, Christian was backstage, about to have a promo, and here comes Sean Bloody Spears. And he wants to fight Luchasaurus for the title. And it's like, why do you get to have a championship match, Sean Spears? That's yeah. not what Christian said. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why are you Sean Spears, <laughs> who I've seen once in the last decade, why are you getting a title match? Fuck off. That's, <laughs> what, I That's what Christian should have said. Just yeah. like, who the fuck are you? Um, Statlander versus Frost. Statlander is not... It's not her. The booking of Statlander is going to piss me off. I know it's going to piss me off because they're booking a lot like Orange Cassidy. Yeah. Every week, title match. Yeah. Stop it. It just devalues Statlander because I don't want to see her wrestle every week because she'll get injured and then she'll still win every match and it'll just be the same fucking booking. Yeah. So, yeah, she beat Fro um, Lady Frost, right two and a half stars. Um, Andrade was on a promo backstage where Brody Lee, Brody Lee, sorry, um, Brody King stole his mask. Um, then the House of Black appear on the Titan Trump and basically say he needs to wait. And main event time, Joe versus Roderick Strong, the rated three and a quarter stars. It was a good match. Um, Joe won the match, um, and he's going to be fighting CM Punk next week, which will be a very good match. Um, 15 years ago, yes. No, oh, it's going to be fucking great. It's don't going to be blood and everything. Be. Be blood and everything. I don't think it'll be good. You know nothing. You think Grimes is going to get released. Yes. Uh, <laughs> What's he where doing? Is he? Well, what is he doing? <laughs> Where's the lie? <laughs> and then um, Joe got um, strong, got stretched out um, to end collision. Collision was pretty shit. Yeah. <laughs> and and just start. by the fucking ratings, you see the rating? Yeah. 400,000 people watched it. Oh, God, it's bad. Yeah, they need to start doing story stuff. It's all well and good throwing on showcase matches and having just good matches, but you want this to be like a second show. It needs to have story. At the minute, there isn't any. Not, yeah, there's literally nothing. Yeah, they're not forwarding stories on this show, or there's nothing specific to Collision that you're only going to see on Collision. So yeah, they need to figure just out. Just Punk and Malachi Black has also said that he's not going to appear on Dynamite because his exact words were like, "If you could see him in every show, you might not tune into Dark Collision. Whereas if you want to see me, you're going to have to tune into Collision." Yeah. Um, Carl, just to, I might as well do this live. K found Carl. Carl Robinson just commented on our video. Just to quote two things from the tag match review: the Blood actually did appear on Kamikaze Pro Live once in Tipton. So the comment of them being the best tag team program really could stand, but they're also certainly other tag team, blah, blah, blah. Also, Cheeky Nando's ended up being tag team. Sean Devon, uh, from near the group, gone up to pay for you. Uh, okay, cool. Right, okay. I thought there was going to be more importance of that, uh, yeah. but fair enough. No, no worries. Right, well, we'll oh. crack. at least you did it in between reviews. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll, um, we'll Cole's we'll... coming to do the preview for Kamikaze there. Yeah, that, that can um, be yeah. the exclusive from that. Okay, perfect. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye out for that one because they're always fun shows when we get Carl on. So, um, yeah. yeah, Ray will get that one out soon, hopefully. Um, Tuesday, yeah, perfect. And then we will move on to AEW Dynamite. Yep, so AEW Dynamite happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Goodbye. they're doing this... <laughs> <laughs> they're doing this tag team mystery tag team battle royal that they used to do like WCW like um, Thunderbolt kind of thing yeah. um, so OC Orange Cassidy and Allen have been drawn in the tag team and Keith Lee and Swerve have been drawn in the tag team how coincidental yeah because this um, isn't random <laughs> um, so I read this three and a quarter stars it was really good until it wasn't yeah. um it ended with um, OC and Cassidy OC and Cassidy OC and Allen winning but um Lee looked the best he's been in AEW. The Swerve storyline is going to continue, but they won't continue it at the same time because it's never going to actually end. Yeah, They're just going to start doing other stuff. They need to finish that story. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's mad. Um, but yeah, so they, it was fine. They, um, it was a good match. Um, right for three and a quarter stars. I think it was my match of the night, if I remember. Yes, yes, it was. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um... Then they had a promo package for Nick Wayne, who's going to be debuting next week. Um, so he's actually illegal to actually wrestle there. Son of Buddy Wayne. Um, best friends with Darby Allen. Darby Allen looked after him after Buddy Wayne died. Um, so that was some kind of a insight towards Nick Wayne. So he's going to come in, be mates with Darby Allen, then turn on him? Probably. Okay. I'll, do, I'll just give you a preview um, for six months down the line. 
Yeah, and then he's going to lose to Orange Cassidy. Um, for, the, so, for, the, for the international title, probably. <laughs> yeah. Jack Perry then came in his car and said he wants to fight. Um, he wants to speak to someone, but then Hook attacked him, and then he jumped back in the car and drove off. Jack Perry is fucking awful. Get it, I can't let it go now. Like he, he, they've tried to turn him heel, and he's just the worst. He either needs to never speak and get someone like a Paul Heyman. Obviously, not. They haven't got a Paul Heyman. I can't think of it. it was, I don't know. Who. Don't know. Outside Don Callis. Outside of Don Callis is the only and, person. As you say, outside of MJF, yeah. who can cut a promo, and Punk, who can cut a promo, Christian yeah. maybe. Uh, Christian, Don Callis, someone like mm-hmm. that. They need someone. You need someone like that. Um, but I never want to speak here and speak. Um, there was an MJF Cole skit, which I really found funny. It's so MJF and Cole are trying to bond. Um, they're in the gym. Um, MJF's doing um, reps, and he says, "Can you um, spot me, Cole?" Cole's just texting on his phone. Um, and I thought, what would happen? It'll bar, but MJF just did the reps, and he said, "Thanks." And then Cole's, yeah, no real problems. Then there was a fat guy, um, and MJF was trying to be mean to him, and Cole said, "You can't do that." And then um, they both said at one time, but it does look like Tony Schiavone, um, just to rip into him. It was, and then, so have you seen the videos from MJF ringing him while he's streaming, Adam Cole? Yeah, yeah, the Twitch stream. There's, yeah. there's two now, isn't there, where he's, he's yeah. done it twice. So, uh, yeah, go and check them out because it's funny. So good. Um, and then the play into the whole joke of Adam Cole doesn't really go to the gym anymore. So MGF lifted this lot really heavy weight. And then Cole went, um, okay, I'll do it. And then um, MGF goes, you want me to take the weight, Danny? Well, we'll do it. And they kind of pan in. So you can't, you, you can see the bar going up and down and you can see how the camera shot hasn't been stopped, but you can't see the actual, the whole thing. So obviously he's done like 15 reps of it to prove himself, but though it could be anyone's picking up the weights and shit yeah. like that. Um, but they played into it, and MGF's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, after all this plate thing in it, um, and that's the end of that skit. I, I, I found it funny. Yeah. Um, acclaimed, um, including Daddy Ass versus the Blade and the Bollywood Boys. Yeah. Um, rated two stars. Why? Um, don't know why that was a match. Um, they did a package of Eddie Kingston because he's won the open weight New Japan strong title. Yeah. Um, they announced that the Elite versus BCC and both teams are going to have to get an extra member because um, Brian's broke his arm and Eddie Kingston's in the G1. Um, so they're hinting at who's going to be next with that. And then they have the Tom Bowler for the uh, Matt Hardy's mystery opponent, uh, mystery tag partner, and um, asks Jay City pulls it out and goes, "It's Jeff." And then uh, Matt's going, my brother? And he went, no, Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's, all, that's good. <laughs> I did like how he did it. Um, Jericho's in the ring, and he's going on about, you know, I need to become a better Chris Jericho, and he's going on about like um, his old gimmicks and stuff like that. Don Callis comes down, and Don Callis offers him a chance to join the Don Callis family. <coughs> and then Jericho goes, I've got one, I've got one answer to that, maybe, <coughs> and then walks off. Um, so he might be joining, and he might be joining the BCC for the the match. I'm guessing he'll end up in the elite because that'll be the swerve. Yeah. Um, and then we have Roderick Strong backstage. It's just um, trying to see how his injury was. Um, next up, MJF and Cole versus the Butcher and Matt Menard. So that is a genuinely random tag team. Yeah. That's like you know, I'm fine with that. Um, MJF Cole was brilliant. The entrance. Um, so MJF's playing up the Cole like boom. He does that on the side. Then before he's doing the Adam Cole, MJF's doing laps around him, and then he crawls under his legs and does it. It's like <laughs> so good. Uh, the match was great. He's not rated three, uh, two and a quarter, uh, two and three quarter stars. Um, Cole, MJF kept getting Cole to tag him in to do the double clothesline. You don't know what the double clothesline is. I don't know if it's just a normal double clothesline or it's an actual thing. But Cole just basically hit his finish and then won the match. And then MJF would goes, it would have been better if we hit the uh, the double clothesline, but fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's invited him to another bro sesh next week. And I was like, yes. <laughs> um, Britt Baker um, doesn't care about Ruby Riot, is what I took from this, Ruby Soho. And then um, Jazz Society have a, um, a promo backstage. And then Chris Jericho says, like, you need to learn to be on your own. Like... Uh, for eventually and then do you know who's been drawn together in the um the tag team turmoil thing 
Garcia and Sammy Guevara. Oh, Random. Um, so they're going to be tagging. Um, the other tag teams as well. I can't remember what the matches are. You got Big Will Hobbs, uh, Big Will, and um, Brian Cage are a tag team. Um, so yeah, that's a random one. Yeah. Uh, Britt versus Ruby. I rated it two and a half stars because the finish was stupid. Um, basically, um, Britt Baker got a head smashed into a title. Right. Then got the Ruby um, Soho finished, you know, that, um, I can't remember what, Destination Nowhere or whatever it is, that yeah. kick to the face. She kicks out. And then yet, Ruby Soho wins the match with a ro- assisted roll-up where um, Tony Storm grabs her arm and rolls it up. If Ruby Soho is going to win the match, that fucking total bit was stupid. Yeah. Because why she wouldn't... Oh, fuck, it's so stupid. <laughs> I just don't get it. You um, can't talk at- women's wrestling. Yeah, what's the point of that spot? And then Omega versus Yuta are at three and a half stars because it's Omega and Yuta and a really good match. Um, then the BCC come out to attack Yuta after... Um, sorry, to attack Omega because he's just beat Yuta. Then the Elite come out. Then, weirdly, the Dark Order come out with a chair, stand in the ring, and then leave. Yeah. And that's that's the end of um, Dynamite. Pretty random. Yeah. Just like them tag teams. Yeah. It's swerving our glory. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's stupid. It's uh, Sammy Guevara and Danny Garcia, that random tag team. Yeah, when I when I saw the um, Swerve and Keith team, I was like, I swear they were best mates like six months ago. They were even tag yeah. champs. Um, so how is this random? Please tell me how this is random. <laughs> Uh, no one knows. No, but yeah, that will bring an end to this week's wrestling. So thank you, Ray, as always, for reviewing. Uh, we have our Twitter handle above at the HCW Show, the Twitch handle above the HCW Show, Instagram, HCW Show, Facebook, the HCW Show. We've got my Twitter handle here, right over there, so give us both a follow on there. You'll find our Discord link in the video description, so join, get in there. That's where all of our videos drop, as well as on Twitter. Um, and there is a new social media thing coming over, which we will uh, get DP to announce next week and uh, to get oh, people to follow That it. graphic's going to be so fucking rammed. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, next week there will be a new outlet of social media for us. Uh, it is live now, but we'll we'll let DP announce it because it's, it's his thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll let DP do that on the next podcast. Um, have you got anything else you want to add? Have anything coming up, right? I'm doing an interview with Eric Dillinger, the deathmatch god um, nice. from America, so that's going to be cool. Nice. So that'll just be an indie spotlight rather than a UK one. Yep. So, yep, yeah, because he's not UK based. He is not UK based. So keep an eye out for that one because uh, Ray will have that one in the bag soon and that'll be released pretty much as soon as it's done. Um, we have got an interview coming up with RJ Singh. Uh, <laughs> it's that will, coming. That will get released. Uh, RJ is coming, yeah. It is, yeah. Um, so, DP, if you see this, get your finger out, mate. Um, but, yeah, that is it from me, and we will catch you on the next one. Good night. Goodbye.